society. So greetings, 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 friends. Today we are going to talk about the yin yang of foods, and we're going to have a little Q and A with with you if you have any questions regarding cleansing and the process of detoxing parol is about to join us here and she will be yeah, she will be available for q and a and i i would like to share some things with you regarding the yin and yang of foods okay and we are all familiar with this symbol of the dao right the the yin and yang it's words world famous symbol not many people know what this how much meaning goes behind this right and this symbol should be actually the fire and water to make it to make it more you know more meaningful right because as it is like this it's night and day light and darkness but actually it's hot and cold and fire and water. So to the Asians, it was quite clear that there are two forces in nature. One is hot, another one is cold. One is masculine, another one is very, another one is feminine. One is electric, another one is magnetic. And, and they dance together. One is active, another one is passive. And the inter, interface of these, the dance of these two forces, is basically the history of the entire cosmos, the history of the entire life on earth when you look at it. And you can see, to, the Asians would see the interplay of these two gods, right? The, the people didn't know how to explain this in, in terms of science back then. So they, they called those two forces. They, a lot of times they put deities behind those two forces, right? And they attributed their power to gods. But really the, the entire history of humanity could be written in the interplay, in the dance between these two forces, right? And, you know, in, in India, for example, in Asia, they have these, they have a list of certain cooling foods and warming foods, cooling spices and warming spices, okay? An entire medicine system, Ayurveda or Chinese medicine is very much with respect to this, to these principles here. I am not going to go into the details of that, into the depth of it. I will be just generally walking with you through the supermarket, okay? Because most people, unfortunately, do not eat this. And most people do not even feel the difference between watermelon and a papaya, right? What, why would a watermelon be cooling and papaya would be warming up? Right? Most people don't even see that, that don't, 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 are not aware of it on, on that level. Okay. However, when we go to the supermarket, we are faced with two forces that are yin and yang. And here, some foods are very yin, some foods are very yang. So I'm going to go a little bit from an energetic perspective here the and from the perspective of okay you walk into the supermarket what should you actually consider food and what is yin and what is yang right so we know that those two forces are feminine and masculine the feminine force yin is magnetic it's attractive it's the force, it's like the womb, right? It receives, it opens up, it receives, it nourishes. It is expansive. It is opening, it is receiving. 
it is calming down, cooling, passive. Okay? Yin is very busy being. Just think about that. Yin is very busy being. Yin is a little bit personified like the swan. Swan on the lake. When you look at the swan, the swan will be pedaling under. So all the work that she is doing, it's not visible. That work is done inside, under the water, when she's paddling, while she's very busy being majestic, being royal, regal, and just admirable, right? Um, this force is opening and expansive, and I want you to remember that, because it will also, if you apply this force to the kitchen, the force of yin, foods that are very yin, will be opening the veins, broadening the veins and arteries and capillaries. Foods, are, foods that are very yang will be contracting and closing the veins and capillaries, okay? So for example, the force that is yang is like a divine warrior energy. It is the energy of electric, it is electric energy. You can't mess with it, okay? It, it is the energy of clear boundaries, contracting, closing. It is a territorial energy, hot, fiery. It is the energy of giving. It's very generous, yes? Providing, and it is active. This energy, the energy of yang is do, 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 do while the energy of yin is be, very busy being. And it looks to the outside as she's doing nothing, but all the work is done inside, yeah? And then we can see later the fruits of the labor when the child is born, right? We can see, we can see later what she has created. So the force of yang, when, it, when it's applied to health, Okay, it will be contracting the veins, closing and heating up, warming the body. When the force of yin, when, it's up, when it is applied in the kitchen, when it comes to nutrition, will be expanding, expanding the body, expanding the veins and arteries, and it will also cool the body cool it from inside out, okay? So now we can see that we live in, a, we know in the Western world, we live in the civilization of excess and extremes. And what happens is that when you actually walk into the supermarket, you will see extreme yin foods or extreme yang foods, right? Because people, are addicted, we have been made, you know, our society has been made addicted to extremes. And foods that are extremely yin are sugar, white sugar, dairy, grains. So for example, of course, whole grains will be less yin than, less extremely yin than white grains. Right, like for example, white flour, white rice, coffee, alcohol, drugs. By nature, most drugs actually open the veins, you know, expand and allow the body to release toxins, right? Release the, the viruses and whatever. I mean, viruses not really, I'm not really scientific proven to, to be honest, but by nature, vi the the drugs like aspirin, for example, they dilute the blood because they open the veins, they open the capillaries, right? Alcohol, the same way. Coffee at the beginning gives that fiery effect of energy, but actually later on it will make you, it steals energy from you. It makes you very yin, right? And um, so if people consume, if one consumes those types of foods, unfortunately we will be 
lacking energy, okay? And also those foods are very yin, so they are very, they're extremely yin, they're extremely expansive. So people who consume these foods tend to put on weight and swell up and have inflammation, like visible inflammation and so on, right? And, you know, you can check and you can pick which, which one is your addiction. Usually we gravitate to either extremely yin or extremely yang, or we dance between both, right? Like, for example, foods that are very, very yang, okay? So, for example, here, I'm just saying, I'm, I wanted to show you that if people can, if someone consumes a lot of yin foods, will be lacking energy, will be sleeping, and when, when pushed to excess, it will basically result in depression, in loss of energy, sleepiness, passiveness, and depress depression, okay? Or we call it laziness, but actually it's not laziness, it's basically lack of energy, okay? Then foods that are very young, extremely young, on the other, on the contrary, will result in too much energy, okay? So for example, food that is the most young in the world is an egg, because an egg has a lot of nutrients and it's very concentrated, right? So it is very contracted, closed. It's very territorial, very compact, yeah? You feel that yin foods are open, receiving, expansive, right? They open the veins, right? And yang foods contract the veins. So very young foods, like extremely young foods, if someone consumes them, eventually they will lead to um, emotions and su su super, like excess amount of energy and frustration and anger, okay? And in extreme, they lead to violence, unfortunately, yes? Because that energy doesn't, if it's not expressed, it can abrupt, yeah? So extremely young foods, for example, eggs, salt. Salt, we know, it narrows the veins, yeah? Salt narrows the veins, sodium. Meat, seafood, fish, and tobacco, yeah? Hi there, Mila, how are you? <laughs> Greetings. So you see, if most people oscillate, some people are either here, other people are more here, yes? But generally, notice this, you walk into a supermarket, you will see foods that are extremely yin and foods that are extremely yang, yes? So you will see these two extremes. And then you can wonder, Okay, so if people eat this kind of stuff, that one has extremely feminine energy and another one has extremely masculine energy, right? Then you can wonder like, aha, so this is why they're so aggressive and this is why they're so depressed, right? This is why, this is why they're so angry because there, there's excess yang, the energy of yang is too masculine. It's out of balance. Yes, the body is overheated in certain places, like in the liver, for example, adrenals over the kidneys, those glands over the kidneys, hormonal glands over the kidneys, they're on overrun. So the body has a lot of stress. The nervous system is contracted with a lot of stress under the excess of masculine energy, the energy of control and do, 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 do. It's a very left brain, linear kind of go, 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 get it, right? Like the energy of a hunter. You can have only an, a certain amount of time where you can be at a healthy rate present in that energy, okay? Then you need to unwind. You need to go from beta brain waves from the do do do, you need to just relax and unwind and be right. And unfortunately, our society does not know how to relax, right, in a healthy way. So the way people relax is that they drink alcohol, drink, do drugs, right, 
or eat something sugary and so on. And then they just have no energy at all. Yes. So you can see that our society, by the virtue of what is in the supermarket, oscillates between depression and look at how much consumption in, in the Western world is of antidepressants, Prozac, tranquilizers, all sorts of you know, mood altering drugs to keep people happy and jolly and everything is all right, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. until you realize it's not so. <laughs> and, and then our society oscillates to anger and violence. So you can just explain the entire history of hum humankind, poof, extremely yin foods. Yeah, those are foods that expand veins and capillaries and they, are they cause, they make us swell up, yes? And they make us wanna sit, they make us passive. Yeah, they sedentary lifestyle, yeah? The advantage is that when we sit, we get a lot, we get a lot done, right? So, you know, it's a lot of times people consume those foods just because they think I need to eat this because I need to, I have a lot of stuff to do and I have to force myself to sit at the computer and do things I don't like, right? Because, so therefore I'm gonna eat some of this so I actually get grounded, right? And then, these, these foods, they actually make us do, 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 go, 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 and so on. They can be also very mentally stimulating, yes? But also they can cause violence. And when those two things are, are consumed, especially in the GMO, genetically altered version, what happens is that people end up, the brain ends up a lot of times on you know with multiple personality disorder bipolar because you see bipolar people wonder like why do we have so much bipolar phenomena right now I'm like yeah like look extreme yin and extreme yang right why do we have so much you know neurosis psychosis a lot of you know mental disorders and so on those are these those are two extreme forces that that play here right and i'm just gonna go back here you see one force is yin yeah? yin is very magnetic it's feminine force it's magnetic it's expansive it's opening it is receiving and cooling nurturing coming down yes but also it's passive it's very busy non-doing it's very busy being. It's yin, it's like the swan that pedals under the water. And you think like she's doing nothing, but she's moving on the, on the surface of the lake, right? Very gracefully, right? Yang is the energy of a lion or tiger that is going there after the cheetah and is hunting, right? It's an energy of action. It's the energy, it's masculine energy of a warrior, lover. You know, it is the energy that is providing. It is the energy that is nurturing, giving, generous. Generous because he has surplus of energy. He has too much of energy. Therefore, he wants to protect. He wants to provide, right? And he has too much action. He is looking to give this action to someone dedicated to some higher purpose. Yeah, so, and this energy is electric. Yes. I'm not saying that a woman cannot go in the electric mode. We know we can. <laughs> oh, yes. We know we can go electric. And I'm not saying that a man cannot go in the yin mode because it's not gender specific, you see human spirit is both yin and yang we have those two energies available to us at any moment women tend to be more yin and less yang and men tend to be more yang and less yin right when they are like healthy 
But nowadays, as we see, it's been so shifted and topsy-turvy that nobody knows who is who anymore, right? So, <laughs> yes, as you can see, I'm very politically correct. So, so you see, this, these two energies, these two forces are both fire and water dancing. One will be heating you up, giving you more action, more... Uh, more, you know, turn on the gas. Another one is hit the brakes, calm down, relax, move slowly, okay? And when you actually enter the kitchen, okay, unfortunately, the society, the whole food industry has been weaponized to give us foods that are extremely lean and extremely young. You get that? So it's almost like we don't have the middle. That's why people's life feels so empty a lot of times. And that's why we, a lot of times we oscillate that when we eat sugar, is some, we eat something sweet. Notice this, that if you eat something sweet, you crave something salty. Yes, salt. You get that? You eat some, you eat some dairy, Okay, you will need, you will, you will want some, I don't know, some meat, for example, you eat some meat, you want some dairy. Yes, if a lot of times if you go to a party, okay, let's say you go to a, a barbecue, what happens at the barbecue, they will feel they will serve sausages, they will grill sausages. So it is meat which is very young it's extremely young and it is heat up by fire so it's even more young right and then after this what do they do some alcohol some beer right you go to for a wedding they will kill a, a chick they will kill a pork for example they'll grill the sheep or the pork or you know whatever right and then they will eat, they will give a lot of pastry and alcohol, right? And just be, be, aware, of the, be aware of this. None of this is good or bad. It's just fire and water, okay? The only question is, do you really want to ride the bike on such extremes, okay? You know how it is to ride a bike when the wheels are too big? Have you ever tried? When, when the wheels are too big? You know those bikes when they used to have that the wheel was like gigantic? Right, so now imagine you have, these, you have a bike with big wheels and you're going up the hill. The wheels are too big so that it's too much extreme. You have to pedal and pedal and pedal, extreme yin and extreme yang, right? You eat something salty, you crave something sweet. You eat, you, you eat something sweet, you crave something, something salty, right? Something yin, something yang. What happens is that you get very tired very easy. Yes, also the bicycle can go off balance because it's circulating on such extremes, right? The, the wheel is so big. You, the pedals are so, so far from each other, yes? What I'm advocating and what has really helped me is to go more in the center and ask yourself, what really, what really is food then, right? I mean, this, we can see one thing. When we enter a supermarket, what we see, we see products. Right? Even sugar is a product. It's made out of beets that have been very refined. And then it's white sugar, right? Or cane sugar. It's, ref it's, it's out of, you know, it's also refined from cane. Yes? When you think about it. Then pasteur pasteurized, overcooked like five, ten times. It has no, no probiotics anymore. Not, like, no, no benefits at all, even for the digestion, except numbing, cooling, 
so you don't feel. Estos foods numb you. Food that is yin numbs you, calms you down, grounds you. And foods that are very young, they stimulate, they activate. Yeah, so notice this, you, you, you eat eggs, for example, you, you have fried eggs, yeah? It's neither good or bad, just check how you feel. What I advocate here is know thyself, observe thyself. Yes, everything here has been created by, by you, the, uh, created for you, by you. <laughs> the question is, do you really need it? Okay, and now, now the question is simple. What is food? Okay, what is food, really? I once asked an athlete, Antone Serna, who is, you have interviews with him inside the membership area, Okay, I strongly recommend see those interviews. Anthony is one of the healthiest people I know personally. Like, I mean, he runs 13 miles a day. He sleeps maybe three hours a day, travels worldwide, helping people to heal from cancer. His life is that of service to humanity. So, I, you know, when I see someone who is healthier than me, I take notes. I just sit down and tell me, tell me what you do. Tell me how you live life. Tell, tell me, teach me, teach me, teach me, teach me, right? Because his body is speaking louder than his words, right? You see, words can lie, but the body never lies, right? So I asked Anthony one time, Anthony, what is food? And he said, food is what you cannot live without. If you can live without it, it's poison. Think about it. Food is what you cannot live without. If you can live without it, it's poison. Okay? And you see, our process of evolution and spiritual, the, this great spiritual awakening here and the raising frequency, raising vibration, it's a very intimate process, gradual and very personal. When you go through, when you navigate through your connection with nature and you ask your body, hey body, hey body, can you live without it? Yeah, and as you detox, as you cleanse, your body will be giving you constant feedback. Like, hey, you know what? You can give that up. I don't need it anymore. Right? The attachment is gone. Yes? This is why I refrain from judging anyone on what they eat. Because it's an individual journey. Only you know your body and only you know what you cannot live without. Right? Nobody is there to tell you that. But you can see that, for example, you see, for example, in my personal journey, yes, I grew up in Poland. It was a very, you know, mashed potato, <laughs> cabbage, steak, chicken soup, uh, sandwiches, and we ate meat once a week, okay, on Sunday. That's when we had ham, and it was like a celebration. Right, because you know, in that time, my parents didn't have money to buy us to buy it more. I remember my mom would wake up three in the morning to stand in line in the shop because the shop would open at 8 a.m. and within half an hour, whatever was provided in that shop, it would be just purchased by everyone. Zoom. So if you showed up, if you showed up at 8 a.m. to the store, it was gone. Everything was gone. Yes, the, the store was empty. So I remember she made a huge sacrifice to get me the animal protein, right? So whenever we actually ate meat, it was once once a week on Sunday, it was like a special thing and so on. My parents ate meat once a month. Okay. Their grandparents. They, eat meat, they ate meat for 
celebration, like for example, a wedding or Christmas or funeral or some kind of a, you know, a child was born, baptism, yeah, some kind of a big festivity. And what we see in our society that today, today people, people, especially kids, consume animal protein several times a day. It is added into every single food they consume, even gummy bears. Seriously, even gummy bears are made out of the spine of a cow. When you think it's like, seriously? Yeah, like, so I encourage you, read ingredients, what's really inside there, okay? And most likely if it's in a supermarket, if it comes from European Union, okay? If it comes from the United States or made in China or whatever, okay? Then, you know, ask yourself if you really consider that food, yeah? When I was in Malaysia, they actually, uh, they, the local Malaysians told us that, that uh, Chinese uh, made uh, 3D printed cashews out of plastic, <laughs> plastic cashews. They tasted like cashews, but they were not really cashews. They were, they were made out of plastic. And also there was 3D printed eggs that looked like eggs, but they were not really eggs. So, I mean, you see, eyes can deceive you, right? You need to feel in your body. And the best what I recommend is work with a local farmer, find a, a trusted source, someone who loves the land, someone who loves their, the, you know, their farm with that sacred, simple connection with nature and pay the farmer directly, yes? So you see my body, initially I was, it was very, very simple meat and potatoes diet kind of thing. Yes, lots of dairy, cabbage, cheese, you know, it was just very simple during communism. Things have changed when we, when communism collapsed and everything became very colorful in a store and lots of empty calories and lots of advertised garbage. Okay, and very addictive. Yeah. And so I ate a lot of KFC pizza and, you know, drank Coca-Cola every day and just junk, junk, junk and ice cream and more, more junk and so on. Once I detoxed my body, gradually, I realized that my taste buds have changed. Like I, like the, on the tongue, I no longer crave meat, for example, or, or white sugar. Yeah, before I would spoonful the white sugar, white sugar like this. And then I just like, once I detoxed, I was like, that's just, that feels like so jittery, the energy, like so, right? So I no longer craved it. You see that? So I, so I arrived at the, at, the, at the place where I, where I knew I can live without it. Yeah? And the cleansing, cleansing and detoxing your body, it's actually a process of letting go. It's a process of purifying your body, purifying your blood and cleansing your palate. Okay? Removing microbes, parasites, whatever is craving, or excuse me, whatever was craving in the body. And it's a process of like, hey, I can actually live without it. So it's a process of more freedom when you think about it. The idea is for you to have more freedom and more energy. Not coming from sacrifice that, oh, I really would love to have it, but I cannot because Evita says so. You know, you can go on like this for one day, two days, a week, and then you're gonna hate me, <laughs> and you're gonna you're gonna go eat it anyways, <laughs> right? So it's not a sustainable thing, right? The you wanna cleanse in such a way where you arrive at such a sense of freedom that you can walk through the city where everybody will be eating junk food, whatever, and you're free. You're not craving that. You're untouchable by, your, it doesn't drive you. 
anymore, doesn't stimulate you anymore. And that happens when you actually reset the bacterial floor in your body. You no longer have microbes that are going, hey, you know what? I need ice cream. I really need it. Like, I, I can't live without it. <laughs> and those microbes have a tendency to send a signal to the body, to the brain, and they create a craving so that we humans end up eating food for them. So they multiply when you think about it. That's how clever that is. And there is a parasite. I don't remember what's the name of that parasite, but it's super intelligent. It is feasting on a rat, okay? And that parasite fools the rat to go and eat food, not for rat species, not for rodents, but it, it falls the brain, it sends chemicals to the brain of the rat and the cravings on the palate to go eat food so that the parasite would multiply and, this, and the rat starves itself in the meantime. Can you imagine this? But the parasite breeds and it eats up its own host because that's how stupid they are, okay? So, so consider that, right? There, is, there are microbes that exist out there in nature that if we lower our pH, then they jump in and they create cravings. And then we are ruled by those cravings. Children are ruled by lots of cravings nowadays. And they, we don't even know like, where is this craving coming from, right? And it could be worms, parasites, microbes, yeast, fungi, and so on, right? That's why we use certain herbs to detoxify and change the pH so those microbes will not have, they will die or they will, they will come out with poop and pee. They will leave the body, they leave the host and then we have more freedom. And all of a sudden we start craving and liking food that is actually for our species. Okay. And now the question is, so, so you see gradually as I was cleansing, as I've been cleansing, it was a process of let go and say goodbye to this and say goodbye to that. And right now we are in this, in this time when, you see, we have this time of ascension, right? When our energy is rising and we have, we see so much stupidity in the world and so much emptiness. And it's, this world is boring. The 3D world is boring. And more and more we find ourselves that we are not even attracted to what they call food here. Right? Just like we're not attracted, we're not driven to, to go and, and work just to get a, ourselves some Gucci bag for God knows how much money. Right? It's the same thing. This less and less this 3D illusion has a, a spell over our mind. Think about it this way. Your body is a hologram. Because when you can see it, you can touch it. Right? you can hear it when you crack bones you can hear it right so you perceive your own body with your five senses so it is part of the matrix part of the inverted matrix of this illusion this computer simulation yes and you create your body but the idea that your body which is a hologram would have to eat other holograms that are food their so-called food, it's a funny idea when you think about it, right? It's like pictures on a Photoshop that would have to eat other, Photoshop, other pictures on Photoshop, right? Why would they? So many people who are fasting and cleansing, there are people who achieve such freedom that they have no more craving for food at all. No more craving for, for liquid, yes? I know people like this personally, and they're very, very humble, very simple. They do not advertise. Hello, I don't eat, I don't drink because they don't need that, you know, attention, right? But imagine the freedom when you walk on the earth and you are not dependent on, on, on food for sustenance, right? It's increased freedom. 
So if that is a possibility, that is also very interesting, right? Because we are energy beings. If we're energy beings, then wow, you know, maybe we can sustain ourselves through en by energy, by light, by sunlight, fresh air, breath, meditation, our intentions, right? And so on. I'm encouraging you to question everything we learned in this limited survival reality. Simple, okay? Because so much more is possible. So when you go through the cleanse process, and it will be a process over months, you know, the coming years of your life. Yes, it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle of self-awareness, knowing yourself. You always ask yourself, can I live without it? For example, avocado. Can I live without it? Yeah, I can. So I don't eat it. Okay. Simple. Detachment. Yeah. Can I eat without, can I live without, you know, without bread? I taught myself to, to live without bread. It was difficult because it's very tempting. It's very crunchy, right? It's very sensual and gives you this, it gives you this feeling of, um, um, I'm actually eating something. <laughs> yes. And it gives you this feeling of, I have something in my belly. Now I can sit down and, you know, and do something, right? I'm, I don't have that emptiness because you see, we're so used to having something in the belly that when our belly is, is empty, we don't even want to, we don't even want to sit down and get things done. Have you noticed this? I noticed this when I'm juicing, I just want to walk, move, wash the dishes, you know, ride a bike, dance. I don't want to sit at the computer. It's very hard to force me to get shit done on the computer. You know, it's very funny, huh? So anyways, I remember when I put, when, when Noah was going into Waldorf school one time and um, Noah grew up with me in Hawaii and we were just on fruit and salads just in coconut water. That was just every single day, just abundance of fruit. And when I say abundance, I mean, if you ever saw, saw me shopping, it's pretty much like this, that I go to a farmer, I would go to a farmer in Hawaii and I would ask, how much are bananas? And he would say, you know, $20 a kilo or, or $2 a kilo. I'm like, okay, how much are all bananas? <laughs> like the entire box. Yeah. And then I would get it at the discount price. Yeah. And then I would just, then I would, I would make lots of smoothies with these bananas and all sorts of different versions yeah, with coconut water and so on. So I would just, I would buy bulk from the farmers because then I would get a nice deal, you know? And even here in, in, in Albania, I also buy bulk, right? How much are apples? Yeah, but all the apples, the entire box, and I, I get a nice price. They bring it here, they deliver. I don't even get out of the town. I don't even get out to the town where the temptation lies at every corner, <laughs> okay? I keep my home pristine pure, Proof, <laughs> yes, I know that when my kid opens the, the cupboard, there is no temptation there. There is plenty of fruit displayed everywhere. And I have, the only things I have in, have in the kitchen and in the fridge is what I approve and what I know are healthy, what I, what I consider food, yes? I have nothing there that my mind would one day or one night wake up and go, you know what, I need to have peanut butter. Like I need peanut butter, I cannot live without peanut butter right now. Yes, I don't have things like this <laughs> because I know that if I, lay, if I leave them in the store, okay, it's most likely I will not, I will not eat them in the night, right? So, so all those tempting things out. A lot of times you know, when I would work with clients, I did retreats in, in, in America and in Europe before. When I would work with clients, I would just open the cupboards, show me what you eat, open the fridge, and I know exactly what's going on in their body. I know exactly what's going on with their kids. It's like, it just speaks volumes, right? 
and and you know i come from compassion i don't come from judgment it is what it is and i'm here to help them right so I would just go take a box and just go to the box to the box preach to the box this to the box and then i would just it's like read the ingredients here read the ingredients here read the ingredients here and so on and then okay boom 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 just give it to the homeless okay let's go shopping to the farmer's market they would freak out and people would be like wait 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 wait, wait. this is my food this is my food and you know once because they hired me once they hired me i i could i was free to go and actually do this action because before they would they would be really upset right so so anyways we filled up the fridge with fruits and veggies I, I, if I buy so much, then I'm obligated. I have to cleanse. Like, yeah, you're cleansing. You spent so much money on all this beetroot, on all these freaking apples. You don't get it spoiled. Okay. You need to get things. You need to jump into cleanse, right? So I obligate myself and I put nothing close to my eyes, close you know, for my senses to be stimulated. Yeah, I force myself to it, to, to, to this. Okay, when it comes to children, you will be surprised if you put, if you put a lot of fruits, if you display a lot of fruit around kids, especially, you know, summertime, right? You just put fruit at every single corner and nothing else, remove candy, remove chips, everything else. All of a sudden you will notice that kids will be munching on fruit like monkeys, okay? And they will go, they will run to the toilet, run to the toilet, run to the bathroom, run to the bathroom. It's just the way how, we, how they clean, you know? Fruit is the most cleansing food on earth and the most yummy also, right? Okay, so uh, I can see there is the question coming here from Tatiana. Tatiana, I'm going to take questions as soon as I finish the presentation because I don't know how to, I don't know how to do this. Okay, so um, what do apes eat? Okay, why did I put the slide here? Yes, but because what is actually food? Yeah, what is food specific for human species? Okay, and you see the Darwinian science is going explosive Okay, the Fauci's are going explosive to defend the theory that human beings come from monkeys. But then they're, they're telling you that you have to have animal protein, that you have to have this, you have to have that, you have to have cheese, you have to have bread, you have to have uh, grains, you have to have the, the whole food pyramid. It's completely unscientific then. Because if human beings do come from apes, then let's watch. What do it eat then? If your body, right? If, the, if, if Darwin, who was a fraud himself and who gave up his own theory that human beings come from eggs, but if, if, if we stick to that guy, if he, we stick to that theory that was never proven, okay, then okay, let's stick to it. Then okay, human beings come from eggs and what do they eat? Fruit, fruit and veggies. You want to make an experiment? Go to the zoo and look at bonobo chimpanzee, which is the biologically, when it comes to DNA, is the closest to human DNA, closest to human species, and throw them some watermelon. They'll go fight for it. They will take the watermelon, break it, eat it, they'll have a party, feast, okay? It's fun, yes? Like they love eating veggies, they chew on the roots, they sharpen their teeth on different roots, they chew on celery or different twigs. Okay, and I mean, I'm talking about strong animals, gorillas. Yeah, so when they tell us that, oh, you have no muscles if you are eating fruit, I'm like, really? You know, my friend who is an athlete who runs 13 miles a day, all he does is eating fruit. Fruit into the bathroom, fruit into the bathroom. <laughs> and he says, Eva, you know, he says, we are symbiotic with fruit. We're symbiotic with trees. Trees give us shadow. They give us wood. So we build our houses. We build our furniture. Yes. 
and trees also give us fruit. And when we pick the fruit and eat it, in nature, naturally, the homo erect, right, the standing man would, would walk and walk and walk and poop. And after a while, when you poop, what happens? You spread the seeds of the fruit. So the trees would grow, yes? So imagine the paradise on earth that we used to have when human beings just basically ate simple, we would pick fruit, walk, and plant another tree somewhere else. So, <laughs> right? So I'm just, um, and you see when, when, when you look at fruit and veggies, fruit are very close to Tao, close to the center of yin and yang, and veggies are also very close to the center of yin and yang, yeah? Plant-based fruit, when it's alive, it has that energy of steady growth, okay? And now think about it this way. When you are building projects, yeah, you also want to have an energy of steady growth in business, in leadership. You don't want an energy of run, do, 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 and then collapse, right? You want to have a predictable, stable energy of every day we grow, we grow, we expand, we grow, right? Also, fruit gives you happiness. When you really cleanse and when you cleanse and super overeat on fruit, which is naturally easy to do when it's warm weather, right? There's a lot of, in Europe, there's a lot of berries and you know, all sorts of juiciness. Here in Albania, we have an abundance of watermelons in the summer and grapes, just such a bliss. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, in San Diego, I would eat sometimes, like, I don't know, I, I ate like 16 watermelons over the weekend. 16, yes. And you know, at the, the, on day one, I ate two, right? And I was full. Day three, on day two, on second day, I ate four all of a sudden, right? On the, on the next day, I ate boom, 10 and so on. You get that? So it was like more and more and more. And the more fruit I ate, the more my body would get energized, strong. And I felt muscles shaping up from under the skin, okay? So it was not from effort, not from weightlifting, but more from the minerals that came from the fruit. Yes, consider this, fruit has a lot of vitamins. What are, and veggies, right? Also have a lot of vitamins. Vitamins are what? Vitamins is the marketing name, the commercial name for minerals, vital minerals, okay? And fruit also have a lot, has a lot of fiber, which works like a brush. And that fiber combined with water that fruit holds, yeah, that water is already naturally purified for you because when the fruit forms, the plant takes the water through its roots, through the bush, through the roots, through the trunk of the tree, it goes up the the branches, the twigs, and it is like the best carbon filter that you can imagine. Yes, so if that water is already purified. It is hexagonal, it is alkaline, it is structured crystal, with crystal energy, with a lot of Mother Earth love and wisdom. And it goes there, it marries the sunlight. Yes, it's the energy of water and sunlight. So water and fire, right? Yin and yang, which is where we began this class. Yeah. And it is, and, and that the, end, the, the fiber that is in the fruit acts like a sponge. So it actually cleanses out the digestive tract. Okay. All the sludge we might have there from pizza, from cheeses, from meats, from, uh, you know, from the croissants and baguettes and 
gluey, gluey, sticky rice, and so on, right? Fruit goes there and cleans it out like a sponge, like a brush. That's why at the beginning, when you're cleansing and you're eating fruit, it can be unpleasant because it's like, hold, hold on a second, Eva? A lot of times people say, Eva, when I eat fruit, it irritates me. And I'm like, yeah, what did you eat before? Nothing. I'm like, no, no, what did you eat before? Hot dog. <laughs> okay. Or chicken, for example, right? So, of course, the, the, the watermelon, you imagine you put the whole watermelon into the pipes of the body. Those are, you know, those are soft pipes. That's what the digestive system is. Then it goes, the watermelon goes there, it expands, right? And it goes, it's being pushed down. It has to push that hot dog down the pipes. So it's going to be feeling of discomfort and irritation and so on, but it's actually purging and you're going to poop it out. Okay. And it's going gravity down. There's no way it's going to go anywhere else. Yeah. So you see, health is very, very simple. I often say it that, you know, people are debating, should we use this supplement or that supplement and so on. Supplements, I will list the supplements for you guys that you can, you can use if you are into supplements. They can sometimes give you like a boost, okay? But they cannot be your lifestyle. Okay, they can be a boost, like, you know, to the car, you just boom. Right, you jump start the car. Once you drive, you, you should just power on oil, you know, in the in that car, right? And the the best the best fuel for for human beings are are, are is plant raw alive plant plant nutrition. Because when you see when you see apes, you don't see that they cook their food either, do they? You know. And, you know, my friend Anthony, who, as I said to you, is an athlete, super, the most healthy person that I know on earth. I, I, you know, when I would ask him, Anthony, what do you think about rice? And, I, and he said, Avira, have you ever seen um, monkeys eating rice? No. Okay, so there you go. You've got your answer. That is he's good. He's, he's very simple. Like, Anthony, what do you think about carrots? And he's like, yeah, I've seen monkeys eating carrots. So then I asked him one time about, about avocados. And he says, you know, the only time I've seen apes, monkeys eating avocados is if people gave it to them in the zoo, in nature, and the ape will never touch avocado. And if you give avocado to a dog, the dog will die. Can you imagine this? Because the avocado has so much fat, there's such high fat content, it's like eating butter. Okay, so choose fruits that are juicy, that have water, okay, and that have a lot of sunlight, that's the fire. Yeah. I would avoid, I avoid fruit that is very fatty, very dense, that, or very, that is not, raw, not ripe. For example, make sure the fruit you eat is actually ripe. And sometimes here in Albania, I go to the farmer's market and I go, look, oh, this kiwi, it's not ripe. It's too hard. I'm not going to eat it because it's too hard. Right? But then I wait until it gets ripe, that it's like a little bit mushy. The price goes down. Mine. <laughs> and they're looking at me like, why is this? Why is this? Polish woman buying kiwi that is going to get spoiled. And I'm like, because it's right, people. It would naturally fall off a tree. See that? When it falls off the tree, that's like, that's that moment you want to catch it. Yeah? When it easily falls off the tree. Yeah? A lot of times, you know, in, in stores, in supermarkets, if they sell fruit, unfortunately, it's been shipped across the world scanned with ultraviolet to stay fresh okay microwave scanned with some rays and it stays there and it doesn't really ripen naturally so avoid fruit like this it's better to eat local and find fruit that is actually ripe 
Yeah? It, fruit should not give you resistance when you eat it, except apples. Apples are like, you know, apples, when you bite them, they'll be crunchy, but also, you know, when an apple is ripe and when it's not, right? Because it's by the deliciousness, you will know. All right, let's see if I can, I can confirm it. Tatiana can confirm it. Awesome, thank you so much, Tatiana. Tatiana, would you add something here from you? I don't know how to. Okay, hello. Hi there, Tatiana knows me from Hawaii. Oh gosh, Tatiana, hold on. Let me stop sharing the, let me stop, stop, I'll stop sharing the screen. Yeah, Tatiana, what do you remember when it comes to lifestyle that we had in Hawaii? Yeah, exactly what, what you said, uh, Erika. You know, I never saw anybody having whole refrigerator full with fruits. Yes. And juicing. It was one of my best experiences ever. Yeah. yeah because, can... mm -hmm. yeah, when you really do, do it with somebody, then it's much easier. Yeah. And you, you, you know how it feels in your body when you have, yeah, when you, after juicing, you know, before I was always thinking I, I would be uh, hungry, right? Just having smoothie and juice, but it's not true, you know? You just feel so energized and happy. And um, so now I have to start again. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah, so you see, it's a process. Sometimes you have to be very patient with yourself and very forgiving, okay? Because yeah. you will notice, right? You will notice that sometimes you go forward, you go forward and then you go back. You go two steps forward and one step back. Two steps forward, one, st one step back. Because you're learning how to drive, how to ride the bike. You know, when a little kid learns how to ride the bike, they fall, they fall, right? They fall. They have supporting wheels. And then after a while, mama takes the, dad takes the supporting wheels and they fall, they bounce and so on. And fine, you just have to be very patient and, and knowing that it's a process. And you see, you, you cleanse once, you, you, you continue eating healthier. You're already eating healthier and more clean diet than you ate before, right? Don't measure yourself by anyone else's standard. It is your own body and you know what you, you, you are getting to know yourself. You're getting to know, you're developing a closer relationship with nature here. Yes, it's a love affair here. It's very intimate, yeah? So then you, you eat healthier, you eat more clean diet. Let's say you, you put aside bread, for example, or you put aside, you put aside cheese or, or, I don't know, red meat the first time, the first thing, yeah? And then you cleanse, you, you, you eat, 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 then you cleanse again, yeah? You again do three-day cleanse or five-day cleanse and so on. Your palate purifies, your digestive tract purifies, yeah? Your, your colon becomes more healthy, strong, more, your liver starts, producing clean alkaline blood so you have more of craving for health now naturally yes your eyes start seeing colors of fruit your, 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 your smell your sense of smell gravitates towards fruit and veggies yeah it more it becomes your senses become more pure in that sense yeah so then you start eating healthier than before yeah and it's a process of like letting go yeah, it's a little bit like, you know, the, it's a, it's a little bit like the process of spiritual growth. When, when we, you know, we grow, we grow, we grow, we grow, we grow and, and we just let go of old beliefs, right? We let go of old um, convictions, old limitations. I used to think that way. I used to believe that I used to go to the church right i used to live in fear and so on right or we let go of certain relationships and we say thank you you know bye and so on right you don't you don't pick up certain phone conversations because you need to go within because we we conscious living souls we living 
men and women, we live from inside out. We don't live from outside in. Okay, this is something to consider. Everything you create is from inside out. And it comes to you, it appears outside, but you first create it in your consciousness. Yeah, so that way you, it's a process of elimination. What attachment to outside do I hold that I can actually let go? Yeah, makes sense. Do you guys have any questions? I wonder if Parul is joining us. I have a question, Eva. Yes. Is it possible that um, the fruits make you fat or you gain weight? Is it possible? Or is uh, the only process of uh, bloating or just uh, uh, no, uh, your body um, uh, is being used to, to have a new diet and... No, so, so this is a very good question. So number one, first of all, is that fruit contains water, right? So if you eat salt and fruit, salt will be creating container because salt contracts the veins and capillaries and then fruit will provide the water. So it will bloat you, right? Or if you eat fruit, and, or juicing fruit and nuts or cheeses, right? Fat. I am doing the second. I am juicing, eating fruit and dries. All this. Dries? What dries? Nuts. Uh, uh, nuts, yes. Yes. So if you eat nuts, then nuts create. And I am. Yeah. <laughs> nuts create a coating on the digestive tract. Yes. Like, for example, Imagine, imagine almond butter, right? If you put it on your face, what happens? Later on, you, if you imagine you put almond butter, peanut butter on your face, right? Later on, try to put cucumber or strawberry, strawberry mask. It won't be absorbed, right? So nuts block absorption, okay? Nut, nuts also constipate. Yes, if I eat nuts, I feel like I just ate a brick. <laughs> All right? You get this? If I eat like, I eat a little bit of almonds, I, fe I feel like I, I just <laughs> chewed a brick and I ate it. And I feel so blocked and so constipated. And I just feel like, oh God, I really, I like, I'm cleansing tomorrow, <laughs> you know? Okay, so what happens is that they block absorption and then when they, they, they clog up colon, um, the pipes, the pipes get clogged up, right? So then later on you put fruit and if you have a clogged up pipe, then what happens? Expansion will happen here, right? Yeah, or if, you, if the wall of the colon, if the, if the wall of of the belly here, small intestine and large intestine, which is a lot of times where food sits, right? It goes through the stomach, and then it goes, sits there. So what happens is that if you have that coating of fat, whether it comes from animal fat or plant fat, it creates like the balloon effect because it, it, it close the closes the pores and it blocks absorption. So as a result, you, you have sealed the walls of the, of the intestine and then you put fruit and it's gonna sit there and it, it, it's gonna be like, hmm, there's a lot of juice, but we can't get the juice through the walls of the colon because everything is coated with, with almond butter or peanut butter. Make sense? So in order, you see, you're cleansing on juices. You do coffee enemas, you do salt water flush, right? When you wake up, salt water flush, coffee enemas. You do this because you wanna open absorption. You wanna make sure that the, the digestive tract can actually take in the nutrients, right? And distribute it and bring it back. Hold on a second. 
you want the digestive tract to actually take in the nutrients and, and deliver it to the, to the cells of your body, to the capillaries of your body, right? To your brain, yeah? So, so you don't want to clog up your digestive tract. You don't want to close the pores, right? Of your internal organs, because then they cannot absorb any goodness you pour in there. Make sense? Yeah, so I knew a lot of raw foodists, okay? And they would go juice, 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 and eat a lot of nuts and seeds and, and raw food crackers and gourmet raw food diet and so on. And they would swell up like crazy. And one lady came to me and, you know, she had lungs, she had water in her lungs. And, and she was like a balloon. And she, she, was, she ran a juicing shop and a raw food shop. And I'm like, look, you are, you, are, you are holding the liquid in your body because you're consuming fat that seals the organs, creates that balloon effect, like a plastic bag effect, right? And then you are consuming a lot of liquids in forms of juices and smoothies, and they are not getting absorbed. Okay, so the point of cleansing and detoxing is to open absorption. And then you, pow you put fruit there, you put juices inside there, and they can be absorbed. Yeah, the body can actually pick up the, the minerals and deliver them to your brain first and foremost. So for example, what I discovered is that watermelon, first thing in the morning, when I cleanse, after I detox, right, when my system is pure inside there so the pipes are working the, i'm talking when i'm talking about the pipes is from my mouth to my tushy yes those pipes are actually you know working and absorbing the minerals if that's the case then you know what happens i eat watermelon in the morning when i wake up and 90 seconds later i feel it like coffee boom energy in my brain like it works like coffee, you see? Or for example, I eat blueberries, I would eat blueberries and one minute later, and I feel like they lift my mood like chocolate because the, the chemical component of blueberries is actually very similar to if they work like chocolate. Yes, they lift up your mood, yeah? But you, your absorption needs to be open. That's why you do salt water flush to melt to, to dilute all the sludge that is sitting here on those pipes, yeah? We're talking plumbing, you see that? Most people, when it comes to health, they are discussing which dishwash liquid are we going to use to wash the dishes? That's the whole debate, okay? Are you gonna wash the, with this sponge? Are you gonna push this wash liquid? Or are you gonna use this temperature of water, this sink and fancy schmancy? And it's all supplementation and superfoods, you know, goji berries from Himalayan mountains, uh, kumbaya snake oil and so on, right? I mean, I laugh my head off when I look at this, yeah? I, I was in a documentary called Hungry for Change right next to many of these salesmen. I call them salesmen. They're just selling crap. They're selling stuff, you know? And it's all those superfoods are being shipped across the, across the world. Very expensive, okay? Many supplements, the same thing, very expensive. I believe, I, I do believe that if you use supplements for a short time, boost your system, then say goodbye, freedom right? Herbs the same way. Use herbs, kill the parasites, holy war, jihad, <laughs> okay? And then put them aside. Freedom, right? And simple, simple, because what? Food is what you cannot live without. Can you live without supplements? Yeah. Can you live without herbs? Yeah. So we gradually say bye, say bye to what we don't need. Yeah? Just like, you know, you can live without Prozac, yeah? <laughs> you know, some people in America believe they have Prozac deficiency. 
Ne, da ovaj mi naprozak. Which is antidepressant. It's just so ridiculous. Eva, so, uh, this is, uh, uh, for me now, I, I don't, so we don't have to use nuts, dry fruits? Avoid it. It's uh, gonna bloat you. Why, why they say that they are good and it's good to eat them? Because then? it's easy to sell them. Aha! <laughs> I did. Right? Sorry. Look at this, Mila. It makes sense. I would make, <laughs> we would make a ton of money. There was a time in, on Facebook when I had like thousands of followers and everybody was telling me, set up a raw food shop, set up a raw food shop. And then I was like, what for? You know, you're going to sell them almonds and goji berries and this and this. And I'm like, why? Because you can make money. Yeah. But then I was like, yeah, but people don't need it. Simple. Why would I sell something that people can live without, right? Just so that they can stuff something and, and fill up my pocket? You see, nobody is marketing for the organic farmers. Why? Because you cannot ship fresh fruit and fresh veggies. Yes, you can't ship them and sell them through an online store, right? And this is why all those health gurus are marketing stuff that they can sell. So all of this stuff is dehydrated, has a long shelf life. It is packaged and it has their own brand. It is trademark. Yeah. So it basically becomes a product from that moment. Yeah. I don't believe in products. I believe in mother nature. Yes, and mother, and I believe in relationships. So if I can go, you know, as you know, Mila, I live in a, I live very close to a farmer's market, right? And I actually have a personal relationship with people I, I shop, I shop from, you know, it's just, it's, it's priceless. Yeah. Any more questions? Yes, Judy, go ahead. Uh, are we recorded on this one? Yes, we are recording. Oh, okay. I'm just okay. <laughs> you, okay. So do you, do you want to, you can call me on, on person. You, you, talk me, you okay. talk to me, okay? Anyways, Judy had a very, very good question. She had a request to, by the way, you know what, you know what the crazy thing I've done? Today is Tuesday. We were supposed to have this call on, on Wednesday. It's up very Parul. late. Parul just messaged me. <laughs> Eva, it. is today Wednesday or Tuesday? Because Parul was supposed to join us. It's the solar flares. I'm going through so many changes and I wanted to share it with you. But yeah, it's please. Bit, no, but it's a little bit gross. No, it's okay. Gross is welcome. We are yeah, but you don't want to, you don't want to um, Put it, are you going to send this somewhere or available it's, anywhere? It's going to be uploaded on the membership. So, okay, no. so I'm, I'm going to end this call, friends. Thank you so much. <laughs> Greetings to the world. And, and I'm going to stop recording. <laughs> and then we go talk the fun stuff. Yeah, yeah.